What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're checking out a new 3D printer by Focus. This is the Odin Dash 5 F3 3D printer. Unique, long name, and it's the only printer made by Focus, so I'm not sure why they named it such a long name. But it's a unique 3D printer, few good things going for it, but there are a few things missing that could take it from a good printer to an amazing printer, and we're gonna cover those in this video. Now the big thing this printer has that no other printer has is the ability to fold flat. This is great for people who maybe live in an apartment, don't have a ton of space. If you wanna get out your printer, use it, and then pack it away, this one folds flat with only two screws. So it only takes four screws to assemble it entirely out of the box. There's one on each side here, and then two up top holding this filament spool holder up top. So I take the right screw out, left, and this entire printer folds down flat. So if you need to put this onto a shelf somewhere to get it out of the way, and then you need to get it out maybe on the weekends you do your 3D printing, you can get it out, use it, and pack it away. In an apartment, or someone who just more occasionally wants a 3D printer around, but doesn't want to deal with this big, large thing that always takes up so much room, this one packs away very quickly and easily. And then when you want to use it again, you get it back, put it on a table, put it up, two screws, and you're ready to go again. This is the only printer I've ever seen this feature on, so if that's the one big thing you really need in a printer, this is the only one I've ever seen it on. But other than that, let's cover the rest of the specs of this printer. This build volume here is a pretty standard 235, 235 by 250 tall millimeters size, and that's pretty standard for a lot of printers in this price range. Really good for most people, unless you know you need a bigger printer or you know you need a smaller printer, this should work for most people. The next interesting part is this X carriage, very unique, different than a lot of other ones I've seen. It is a volcano nozzle here, so it should be able to heat up more plastic faster, better flow rates than you would on a normal nozzle. That does mean you do need to use volcano nozzles, which are a bit bigger, a little bit harder to find sometimes. But with online shopping, it should be pretty simple to just order a volcano nozzle instead of a more standard nozzle size. It is a direct drive extruder. That means the motors and gears pushing filament is right inside here instead of being mounted somewhere else on the printer. This is raw filament feeded right in directly into that extruder. Direct drive should get you some better retraction settings, faster printing sometimes, but a good Bowden system can usually compete with a bad direct drive system. This one's pretty high quality prints really well. The next thing to point out are these ribbon cables. So all the bundle of cables going to the hot end are encased in this ribbon cable right here. It means this is a nice, good, sleek model while it's working, but if things were to get damaged or you wanna change things down the road, you wanna start modifying your printer, this means things will get a little bit more difficult and look a little bit more jank if you start messing with things. Another thing I wanted to mention was the box it comes in and what comes in the box. First off, this box is really nice. I feel like this feels like a high-end PC you're buying, like an Apple box, a Dell, an Asus box. I don't know, just better than most 3D printers that come in generic brown boxes. This was kind of a nice experience taking it out of the box. I know that doesn't mean much, but it's just nice to see a company put a little bit more effort into it. And then inside of the box, they start you off with a, I think this is point two five. This is a quarter kilogram spool of white filament, which is great to see. Just a nice thing to get you started when you first take it out of the box. Some instruction manuals, a little box of accessories. It does come with a spatula for getting things off of the print bed. Some offset cutters, which is amazing. Printers usually don't come with these, and I love these. These are my favorite printer accessories. If I had to throw all of my tools out and start again, this would be the first tool I would buy. They also comes with some spare parts. You've got some spare volcano nozzles, some spare ribbon cables, and a few of the odds and ends, Allen keys and wrenches you might need to for working on your printer. So overall, all the things you'd expect, plus a few nice bonuses. You don't normally get a little spool of filament. You're normally just giving it a little winding of filament that might get you through your first test print, but it might even not. Offset cutters, these are amazing. Great to see bundled in there. It's cheap for them to add in there, but it's a nice touch and nice thing to have around. And one last nice thing I liked about this printer before we go onto the cons and negatives about this printer, this print bed is really easy to remove. There are four of these little clips on the side. And once you pull these clips off, then this glass bed comes right off. Really easy to replace it with any other print surfaces. If you wanna try out a different print surface, 
it's fine. This one pops right off. You pop your next one on. Some manufacturers will glue this down and it's a nasty, really difficult mess to try to remove this off of there. So this being removable is super easy to do. And for someone like me who likes to try out things and experiment, this is really nice to see. When talking about the build quality here, because that is an important factor to 3D printers. They're all fairly similar in this price range, but build quality will be different between a good company and a bad company. And this one is really well built. These ribbon cables are all laid nice and flat and that keeps the wires out of the way. There's good strain relief on everything. There are little dabs of hot glue holding in the motor connectors. There's strain relief on the bed, which is great to see. This is one place where it can easily start a fire. This bed is moving back and forth. If this is not properly secured, it can come loose danger. But this one is really well put together and feels safe. And I think that just about sums up the good sides of this. It's a pretty good printer with a lot of nice features to it. There are some downsides and now we need to talk about them. The first one I'm sure you'll notice as soon as I turn it on. You can hear this fan noise and that fan noise is cooling the chassis underneath, keeps all your electronics cool. So it doesn't really matter that they put silent stepper motor drivers, they put TMC 2208s on here, which is great to see. It means your motors when moving the printer back and forth and doing things, those movements will be quiet, but you will always hear this fan noise constantly running. It's loud. I wouldn't want to be sitting in a small room like this if this was printing all day. So that's kind of disappointing. So close to greatness and they put a small loud fan cooling the chassis. That's just always on. The next big inconvenience is this touch screen here. So I do like a nice touch screen on a 3D printer and this one I feel like struggles from just bad translations. So first off we've got tool. I don't know what you would expect to see in there but this is most of the settings. You can preheat, you can extrude some filament, move it around, home, more takes you nowhere and there's nothing under more. Just an interesting amount of things under tool. And then under settings, you have things like Wi-Fi. You can control the fan settings. This is for the part cooling fan. I don't know why this is under settings and not tool. The about section, that tells you what the firmware you're running on here. That's, I think, makes sense under settings. Continue print. So if you were halfway through a print and then you had a power outage or ran out of filament, you would come back here under settings to continue a print. Doesn't really make sense to me. Machine settings, this one makes sense. There are a lot of advanced settings they have in here that you can change around. Motor off, I don't know why turning the motors off would be under settings and not under tool. That's another one that's weird. Language, that one makes sense. Auto load. I don't know what you would expect auto load to do, but it doesn't do anything. You just press auto load and it, I haven't gotten it to actually do anything. So an entire menu system I haven't found a use for. Printing, there's all this nice menu system. You can open it up and they do come with a lot of great print files here. And a lot of these prints like this air guide or the fan hood are parts of the printer that they're giving you the G code for, which is really nice. If you didn't like this yellow look of the printer, you could easily change it to whatever color you want, which I love. I really enjoy that they put that on this printer. The next downside is the Cura profile. The printer slicer profile is not very good. And the pre-sliced test files, it comes with several pre-sliced test files, which is great to see. For a beginner who gets this printer, it's great to have all these pre-sliced things. They can go ahead and just start, start cranking things out and enjoying the hobby of 3D printing. This was the first Benchy I printed using their filament and their pre-sliced Benchy file. And it's not a great Benchy. There's all these things I would have done better. And with a little bit of tweaking, I started to get a better Benchy out of it but I still could have done better with more effort into tuning the profile. For me, I think that's a big telling sign between a decent printer and an amazing printer is how well it prints and how well it prints is how well you slice these files and how well it's calibrated for that printing profile. And so it's just so disappointing to see a lot of good hardware let down by bad software. And if I took the time or you took the time to really do all your calibrations, you can start getting really good prints out of here printing really fast. You got a nice volcano nozzle on here. It can push filament quickly, but immediately straight out of the box, you're just going to be getting mediocre print quality out of here. And that's not a very satisfying thing. Day one. The next big disappointing part of this printer is right here on the side of this hot end. 
There's mounting points for mounting a BL touch, 3D touch, CR touch, some sort of mesh bed leveling, but how are you gonna wire it? All the other wiring is done through this ribbon cable and you can't run these signal wires through that ribbon cable. If they had given you mounting points here like they did and then given you somewhere to plug it in on the hot end and then it, the signal and power wires will be routed through this cable, that would be amazing. Hands down, I would love it. I get not putting it on here, but giving you the ability to upgrade to it later, because if it's not a feature you need, you don't need to pay for it if you're not gonna use it. But giving you the ability to easily upgrade later is amazing, and every printer should come with that. With a printer this late in 2022, not coming with some sort of auto bed leveling, just kind of feels outdated already out of the box. I know manual bed leveling works, and it's great for everyone to learn that skill, but it's also really nice to have a printer with auto bed leveling, you just plug it in, turn it on, and it starts printing perfect first layers every single time. So I think that just about wraps up this printer in total. Normally I would cover the test prints now, and I'll show you a little montage of some of them up close. They're pretty good, but I know they could be better with better software and better tuning, and I just haven't really taken the time to really calibrate them in yet. I know it could be good, because the hardware is here. The hardware is really good, it's really well assembled, but it's really let down by the software side of things. So I think this printer is for the type of person who needs a printer that can fold flat. Something that you can fold flat, put out of the way, and not be printing all the time. This is the only printer I've seen that really does this this well. Also, if you could find this at a really good discount, and I will, as with all of my videos, there will be probably coupons down in the description down below to get this at a better deal check out down there if you're interested in a printer like this. But if you're looking for either a printer that's straight out of the box amazing or heavily upgradable, this printer doesn't really fall in either of those categories since it needs a lot of work straight out of the box to get calibrated and working well. And with these ribbon cables, it looks nice, but it's not gonna be easily modifiable. Well, anyway, I hope this video has helped some people out. If you have any more questions or something I didn't cover about this printer or any other printer questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you. And as always, those like and subscribe buttons are always down below if you're interested. Well, that just about wraps it up. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.